Tastes change, people change, sometimes things change in the industry that end up changing your taste. <laughs> These are the five times we've changed our minds about a whiskey. It's Bourbon Night. Hello, I'm Chad. I'm Sarah. And and we're gonna get into these five right off the bat. Just start it, Chad. Starting with the earliest one I can recall. Wild Turkey 101. In the beginning In of the this beginning. channel. Yes. Chad did not like Turkey 101. Now or where did so you where did you sit on it? I think I was like at the point in my bourbon journey or my whiskey journey where I was not ready for the proof and I was not ready for the rye content yet. So like I could do it, but it wasn't really mm -hmm. my thing. Yeah. Um, it didn't do well for me in the 50 under 50, 25. Yeah. But I will say it's definitely one of those ones that I think has grown on us, has come to the top of our value list. Oh my, yes. You completely did a 180. You were like, I don't like this before. And you know, there's, there's also gonna be a few morals in this episode, I guess. Uh, moral of the story is when you think you don't like something, be sure to go back to it every now and again, especially if you're just starting out on your whiskey journey. Uh, like I was, this was a couple years before the channel started and I'd had it and I wasn't ready for the higher rye, the proof, whatever it may be. And I had written it off. I just thought, oh, it's less expensive. It's just not one of those, no biggie, you know? <laughs> and then we had it blind in the 50 bourbons under $25. So your number one is your number one. Yeah. Is Wild Turkey 101. <laughs> and it um, almost made it to the finals uh, for me, or it did. Flight 15 saw two more of the same bourbons make it to each of our brackets. Johnny Drum 86 proof and Evan Williams 1783. But for me, a total shocker, Wild Turkey 101 advanced. When yeah. you picked up the glass, you were like, Really? Yeah. Because I thought I didn't like this. Well, something to be said about expectations, I used to think that I did not enjoy Wild Turkey 101. Exactly. So that's time number one that we've changed our mind about a whiskey, this time for the positive, as, as I pet it. Uh, Wild Turkey 101, one of our staples. We always have a bottle open on our, on our bar. It's great. It's great. Turkey's great. <laughs> Next on this list is less of a bottle and more of an entire line of whiskey. It's the Maker's line. I kind of have an interesting relationship with Maker's in that my entire family is like from the area. Mm. And as far back as I can remember, this was around every holiday, every family gathering. If anyone was sipping on any spirits, it was gonna be Maker's. 90 proof, and when I came of drinking age, I thought, but why? <laughs> but why? Um, you know, ever since we got started on the channel and we really started oh. taste testing things against each other, I think you and I both have always agreed that the you know baseline 90 proof makers has been too sweet. It almost sometimes gives us a headache. It's just never our jam. Well, and that led us to kind of write off makers we in wrote general. It off. It's like if this is the most popular best selling, they're sort of their flagship. It's their best-selling model. We just thought it's not for us. Yeah, but then slowly we discovered, you know, Makers 46 when it came out, Makers mm. Cast Strength yes. when it came out, the, the Private Selects. Yes. Then 2020 came around and there was those, I mean, by that time we'd already jumped on and said, hey, we, it's just really this guy. But then to just help their case even more, 2020 had SE4PR5, then we had uh, FAE, this year. one this year and the, the hitch the hits keep rolling everything uh, 46 you're a little lukewarm on it i'm i'm better on, on 46 especially the 46 cast strength the 46 cast strength yes regular 46 is a no for me yeah uh it's really just this guy whatever it may be Stop. <laughs> the the 90 proofness of it but we like other 90 proofers so that can't be a thing something about the whiskey for maker's mark benefits from that extra proof and like the treatment that they give it. You know, I love that they yeah. suspend the staves with the private select and stuff. I think what I most appreciate about what makers did was I felt like they they know that they've got their everyday drinker, they've got their lifelong diehard regular makers fans here. The wax lovers. How can they satisfy this group of bourbon enthusiasts that likes things that are higher proof or a little more experimental? Yeah. And so they chased that down. And honestly, that completely converted me to a makers fan. So much so that they just did a, they just started a makers drop uh, subscription service. I think it's only in Kentucky and maybe like one other state right now. We signed up for it and we're supposed to get a box today. Ooh, so if wait. the doorbell rings, that's where we're going to go. Okay. All right. 20 minutes later. Oh. That's who it was. Yeah. <laughs> so we have the doorbell this, did ring and we have this to look forward to. Yeah. A literal proof of our love of makers now. Uh, yeah. 
All right, so before we go into our third one, we wanna hit pause for a second and tell you about our home on the internet. It's whiskeyambitions.com. It's where you can get the new logo t-shirts. Uh, we still have classic logo hoodies. Other hoodies. We have uh, our new Blink Karens, Copitas, Rocks glasses, challenge coins, candles, hats, and more, always coming soon, at whiskeyambitions.com. You can become a patron, and for as little as one buck a month, you can join our community and conversation. Patrons get uh, access to purchase our barrel picks, yeah. which is a limited access. Uh, the opportunity to potentially go on a barrel pick. Let's see, what else do they get? They get after the episode exclusives and more. But it's not all sunshine and rainbows and puppy dog tails. Sometimes it goes Are those happy? the other I guess so. It goes the other way. And for this, we're talking about Noah's Mill mm. slash Johnny Drum, just oh. some other products from the Willet Distillery. Now what we have here is not the first Noah's Mill bottle that we fell in love with. Because we drank that. But a friend of ours did find the the same number. Uh, from our empty bottle and found one of that same number. And I'm just gonna go ahead and pour some. I think you should. Yeah. And for the sake of comparison for this discussion, I guess we'll compare it to a newer bottle. Let's do it. These things can happen, especially with, at the time, a, a, a non-producing distiller because their sourcing and with popularity of Bourbon Rising, their selection and those choice barrels mm. can, can but change. But then also sometimes NDPs start becoming producers and eventually their own distillate gets mixed in with product or just or completely just a replaces. light switch. Yeah. Exactly. Flip. And I think that's what exactly what we have going on with Noah's Mill here. They've been distilling since 2012 now. So the original we say original oh, Noah's Mill. Yummy. Creamy. Syrupy. Peanut buttery. Uh, grape proof at w almost 115 proof. I thought you were going to say grape, grapefruit. <laughs> grape, grape, grapefruit. Great fruit. 114.3 proof in, in this one. So mm. lovely proof. Go ahead and little give it leather, a... Little leather, little tobacco. Give it a sip, Sarah. Wonderful mouthfeel. I do detect a slight hint. I do detect. Where we mm. get with the newer stuff and where I think this one's going to go is a little bit more of like a medicinal, oh. herbal, earthy note that I think comes from their distillate, what they produce. And a lot of people love that, but when you're not expecting it, when you're expecting what we had before, yeah. that change can be a little jarring, especially if it's not your flavor profile. Which, exactly. Let's 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 take a look. Johnny Drum used to be my favorite bourbon. Now tastes do change, so uh, I I do have an older bottle from back then that I've tasted on, and I do like it a lot more than what's on the shelf now. But I am not as in love with it. So of course tastes change, but you can go from an older bottle to a new bottle and taste the difference. Yeah, for sure. The difference for me between these two isn't as significant as I thought it was at one once upon a time. Right. Um, but it definitely is. This Ooh. feels a bit harsher. Yes. And when, especially when we think about that very first, what we call a peanut butter bomb yeah. bottle that we had. If you go back and look at the uncorking, that's the bottle that we used then way, way back. Uh, and we were just singing its praises to anyone who would listen. And so then it was really hard for us when we opened this bottle and we were like, wait, wait, that's not what we had before. I went from recommending it to anyone who would listen to not recommending it anymore, which just, is kind of- Just not bringing it up. Just really. not bringing it up. Yeah. Mm. All right, next on the list, we have OGD 114. It's weird to talk about it in this way because we've changed our minds so much on it. Uh, originally when I was working for a bourbon bar, the bartenders would just rant and rave about how this was like one of the best hidden gems under 30 bucks, great for cocktails, such like a good utility bottle. And then me and you tried it. We bought a bottle. We were like, it's a bartender, like cult <laughs> classic, opened it. And we were like, mm -mm. Again, yeah, and I don't think we were ready. I guess so. And I have a little story about it. I was going to my buddy's, um, wedding that I was a part of, and it was in like South Carolina and I was the only person. Well, one of one of two people who were invited who were from Kentucky. So, so you were like, I gotta bring bourbon. Yeah, I'm the Kentucky guy. I gotta bring a bottle. So actually, same bar that you were talking about, OBC Kitchen. A waiter there who had since moved on and is doing big things at a distillery uh, gave me a recommendation of a lot of things. Actually, uh, some of them were Willet. Uh, oh wow! Products, uh, but. One of them was OGD 114. So I'd never had it before. Again, this was pre-channel 
and Pre oh, pre Chad and Sarah. <laughs> yeah, pre Chad and Sarah. So without even trying it, BCNS. I just, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> before Chad, Chad and Sarah. <laughs> there you go. Without even trying it, I just went to the store, bought a bottle, took it, and this this was me, the the Kentucky guy bringing bourbon for everyone. So it better be good. And everyone hated it, <gasps> including myself. I wasn't ready for it. It's 114 proof, it's a higher rye recipe, and everyone was just like, because you know, we're all just drinking it straight. It, it was harsh, I'm sure. Yeah. yeah, at that point, I think, when I very first had this, earlier on in the channel, um, I was not ready for this at all. But I don't remember, I, yeah, that was like one of our first hot takes. Yeah, we were like, everyone loves OGD 114. All the bartenders recommend it. We hate it. It was like, yeah, Chad and Sarah, hot takes. Yeah. Uh, now I'm like, ooh, I'd like to walk that back yeah. because I really enjoy this. I agree with the bartenders. Like, it's such a good utility bottle for a great price. We've used it in cocktails. We use it in cocktails. I mean, it's good. You gotta be careful when you use it in cocktails, mm -hmm. but I love to use it in a cocktail. Yeah. And even just, you know, to have around for like neat sipping or on the rocks or whatever, like it, it's sturdy. Yes. Um, we love it so much that we were inspired to try an OGD bottle from yesteryear <laughs> that has become quite uh, high up on our list of things that we love very much. Oh, are you talking about the episode entitled The Best Thing That We've Ever Tasted? Yeah. Best whiskey we've ever tasted? Yeah. For a anyone that's watching, a spoiler, but it's okay. You can still go watch it. It's fun. A 1983 National Distillers, Old Grand Animal 14, uh, you know, Jim Beam bought it in the 80s, late yeah. 80s. So it's not made like it used to be back in that day when we, no. when we were trying that bottle, but... Uh, this one's definitely, we've changed our minds. Yes. All right, here at number five is one that we don't have a bottle to bring out here on the table Such because suspense. we've been so contemptuous of a relationship with this brand. This is another brand. True, but we would want a bottle of this. Could That's we get how one? it's changed. Yeah, it's Jack Daniels. So I think our minds changed about this when we did that two Kentuckians try seven different Jack Daniels episode um, where we discovered that there are, cause that episode started out like not in Jack Daniels favor, Ooh, but the farther we got through the episode, the more that you and I were like very pleasantly surprised and actually now would love to have a bottle of their barrel proof stuff. Yeah. Uh, the rye and the bourbon. R the rye and the bourbon, uh, the, the, yeah, the single barrels. That's where they really seem shine. to shine. Although on the other side of the coin, we found one we never tried before that we dislike even more. And that's Gentleman Jack. The 80 proof, the super, super sweetness. It's just not for us. It was pretty objectionable in, in our humble opinion. Now, if that's your jam, hey, more power to you. We always say that. Sure, and I think that you and I are self-aware enough to recognize that Gentleman Jack is not playing to the audience that we sit in. Right. That is not for our audience, that's for someone else's audience. And I'm yeah. glad that, yeah. that those people like it, but for us, it was a no. <laughs> but I was so happy to find that, like, when we get into that barrel proof or even just that higher proof arena, that you and I really gravitated towards it and are now, like, actively looking for bottles mm -hmm. when I think, at the beginning of our bourbon journey, you and I never would have thought that we would have ever hunted a Jack Daniels bottle oh, for a multitude of reasons. Yeah, because personal bias being one. And I think a lot of people uh, think the old number seven is is Jack Daniels, and that's where the buck stops. But you know, it's it's not. Again, much like Maker's 90 Proof, that's their best seller, but. It only, well, besides Gentleman Jack, it only goes up from there and becomes better. So yeah, I would say Makers, Jack Daniels, in our world, have a very similar type of story. That's actually a good call out, Chad. I agree. I think that Jack Daniels probably also realized that they've got their, you know, dedicated old number eight. Is that right? Seven. Seven. Old number seven. Yeah. Eight. Where'd that come from? <laughs> Jack Daniels expert over here. <laughs> <laughs> um, they've got that audience down. They've got them on lock. People all over the world want to drink that. But how do they get those people that aren't falling into that category? And I think that they're doing it right. So I'm really looking forward to see what else they put out. There you go. We want to hear what whiskeys you've changed your mind about, whether it be for the better or the worse. Comment down below and let us know. Yeah, down in the comments. And if you haven't subscribed to us already, we would love to have you. You can come on over and click right up here to do so. There's suggestions of other videos down here. Hope you see you over there in one of those. Until next time, thanks, Sarah. Thanks, Chad. Drink more bourbon.